hospital. You're, you're in bed. It's about 5 o'clock in the morning. The phone rings. And you know nothing good is ever... When you hear a phone ring at 5 a.m., you know it's not good. Every time I thought maybe there was a problem, my husband would, you know, the, the other partner would say, oh, it's just teenage stuff. And you don't know where that line is between regular teenage behavior and true drug abuse. As a parent, it's very devastating to learn that your child is a heroin addict because I always grew up and, you know, was always like, oh my God, heroin, the worst thing in the world. And never did I ever suspect that he was using heroin. I'm quite surprised and appalled by when an adult says, well, I smoked marijuana when I was in school and there was no problem. I'm not an addict today, but it's not the same. I can tell you that historically, uh, crime stopper programs in the United States have a 40% of their calls are related to drugs. In Morris County, it's about 70%. It's events like tonight and, and people like you that help provide us the resources to further meet the need, the very desperate and tragic in many ways need in this state to meet more people and serve more people and help to save more lives. We opened our doors with a 50-bed co-ed facility serving teenagers and their families in, in a long-term substance abuse treatment program. Within a matter of a few short years, uh, our beds were filled and we saw the need to go to the town of Mendham and increase the license and we became a 70-bed treatment program. In the late 1990s, under the Whitman administration, there had been a rash of overdose deaths, young people dying from heroin. So our residential programs have gone from 70 beds to 120 beds. And it's sad to say, but the demand for treatment, especially residential treatment, um, is not decreasing. Every day when you open the paper up, you can see that Daytop is needed more and more. Uh, a prime example, uh, Ocean County this year so far has had 87 overdoses. The heroin epidemic is just astronomical in the state of New Jersey and the United States. Daytop is the place where miracles will happen. And, you know, I've seen and heard, heard the stories from the uh, different uh, youngsters who have graduated or are going through the program. So you have to get to know that. When I was 14, I started drinking. That's when I had my first drink. And from there, my parents signed me into outpatient when I was 14. So I would do drugs on a Thursday night that would get out of my system by Monday. So I would do drugs that would stay in my system for three days and that would be painkillers, Percocets, Xanax, eventually leading up to heroin, which also stayed in my system for three days at a time. And then my habit, when I started doing the heroin, became so strong, I wasn't able to stop and I couldn't stay sober for those five days out of the week. So I would just go to outpatient, sometimes even high, or I would have just done it a couple of days ago and then I would fail my drug test for it and then that's how I ended up in Daytop. I first learned that Alex was smoking dope when he was 14 and he entered Daytop at 17 and what happened in between was of course his drug use escalated until finally we learned that he was doing heroin. Your child goes away to college and you're expecting, okay, they're gonna do all the things they're supposed to do and then they come home on Christmas and we saw right from the beginning that he continued to stay out later and later. Uh, his attitude started to change uh, and it got to a point where you know there's a problem but you're, you've got this denial going on inside yourself that you think well he'll just go back to school and it'll be okay. He was taking Xanax which I didn't know until after. His regular friends started to avoid him so he started hanging around with different kids who probably accepted him and he went out and he was going to use heroin, so he, he took my car against my will. So then I got a call at 4.20 in the morning from the Denellen Police Department that he had been arrested with, um, he was driving under the influence, and they found heroin in the car. It was one of the worst nights, and he doesn't remember it. And if I bring it up now, he doesn't want to really hear too much about it. It's hard to imagine these were, were young people, kids that were broken, 
kids that were in disrepair, kids that were terribly addicted with serious, serious heroin habits. Uh, we see that story, we hear that story all too often as families at their darkest hour bring us their kids and say, please help save our kids. You, you kind of think that you're the failure, but as you start to go to group, um, at, as you go through the process, you're kind of like, yeah, you're devastated, but you have to pick yourself up and get your kid help right away. And then as you start to go to programs here and going through um, support systems, you know, we, we learn as parents that we didn't, we didn't um, cause it, we can't control it, and we can't cure them. Um, they have to cure themselves. Until we got to Daytop, uh, it was just a very uh, traumatic despair. Um, a lot of turmoil going on internally with ourselves. It's like your heart has this vice on it and it's tightened up and you can't breathe. And then until he came here, once he was in this facility, over time, it wasn't immediate, you start to feel the vice loosening up a little bit. You can breathe a little bit more. You realize he's not out late someplace smoking pot, drinking beer, doing heroin with people that you, you've never even met. I feel much stronger than I ever have. I never thought I had it in me to make it as far as I did. I really didn't think I had it in me to overcome as well as I have to the point where I haven't touched anything like that. The program, the kids monitor themselves, they monitor each other, they're responsible, they're accountable. And over the course of 13 months, I mean, Alex really grew as a person and it gave him an opportunity to develop, I felt like, coping skills in a safe, structured environment. Um, he learned responsibility, he finished his education, and I really think it's important that the kids have as much time as they need in inpatient to achieve, you know, the state where they don't want to use anymore, and I was really grateful that he did. I think it's uh, portable that the governor is, is supporting it also. Uh, he is very concerned, and I don't know if you, everyone out there, all of you are aware, but the governor has been very involved with Daytop over the years, and now that he's governor, he's also very concerned about Daytop, and as we all are. I came in the same way every other resident comes in. People look at me when I come here who are residents right now, and they look at me and they're like, wow, I wish I could do what you're doing. And I'm like, I was exactly where you were not too long ago. I was right there. But Daytop offers the same thing to everybody who walks through the door. They give you all the opportunities. They give you every tool that you need to, to make it happen. And they guide you. They, they hold you and they walk you through it. Exactly what I did was I went from being resentful to letting it help me, and it did, and I still, and I take it with me every day still some of the things I learned here. If there's any message I'd like to leave you with, I think that um, it's important to know that recovery works, day talk works, and there's no greater investment that we could do than investing in our kids, which are our future. From what I've seen over the 22 years, the uh, success rate at day talk is superior to any other drug program. I believe in the country. And without your help tonight, we wouldn't be able to fight this problem and help these children have a second chance in life, a chance to get ahead and be solid citizens. All right, as a parent of a child who has entered, had entered Daytop eight months ago, I can, without reservation, say that this saved his life. But finding Daytop, it's given us a chance for me and my husband also to get healthy while Jeff was here. So now that he's ready to be discharged, in two days, um, I feel like we're ready. <laughs> it's rampant out there. I think in today's day and age, nobody can deny that. We're all affected by it, directly, indirectly, whether it's our child or our loved one, or whether it's a neighbor, whether it's a young person that we coached on the local PAL or CYO team. We're all affected by it. We know at Daytop that to meet that need, we can't solely be dependent on public funds. We can't sit around and wait for a state grant or a county grant. It's events like tonight. It's very generous people like you that help us, that help us further our mission and serve people. And that's what we plan to do tonight with this money. The dollars that you are contributing, we're going to reach more lives. We're going to save more lives. We're going to give parents back their children. We're going to give families back to their communities healthy and whole.